In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how we can create a really cool scrolling button effect for the Heather in 7.1, like this one that I have over here. And just because I liked the outline effect that we had going on in there, we're also going to be implementing that for regular buttons across the entire site. So if this is something that you're interested in learning how you can implement into your current client project, make sure to keep on watching to learn how to make it happen. So let's go ahead and move on to our editor. I'm going to close this up and then I'm going to go in here in website tools, just in case you can't quite find the custom CSS window at the moment due to the recent 7.1 update, you can go ahead and head over to website, website tools, custom CSS, and there's your custom CSS window. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with modifying this little button in here. So the first thing that I want to do is find a way of targeting this button so that I can actually make the modifications that I want to make. So let's go ahead and look through the inspect element tool to see what this is called, what kind of class or ID or anything I can use to be able to point to that out to my browser so that I can actually make the changes. So here, if we take a look inside our 7.1 Heather, you're going to see that there there's a bunch of stuff in here, but just to narrow things down, you can see that I landed on the A element itself. And this one has a couple of classes. So we have button, button, border, theme, button, primary, inverse, SQS, button, element, primary. All right. And then we have a couple of other um, containers in here. So we have that this one is being wrapped by this one called Heather Actions Action. And then we have a couple of extra in here, but these ones are not holding this one. So I'm going to skip them. And then we have this one called Heather Actions. Um, and then this one, again, it's not holding it, so I'm skipping it. And then we have just a bunch of other containers. So anyway, what I want to see next is where the actual content of this element is, because that's going to be important for the modification that we're going to be making here to be able to create that scrolling effect. So here you can see that the A element itself is the one that is carrying the text. So that is the one that we're going to be modifying. This is the, the target container that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and select a class from here. Now, I already know that this class of SQS button element primary is not only applied to Heather buttons, but also to other elements across the site, the primary ones to be specific. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm only modifying the Heather one by using that class or one of these classes. It really doesn't matter which one. And I'm going to be including another class that only corresponds to the Heather portion of my website so that no other button gets modified. So I'm going to be using that SQS button element primary class just because I'm going to add that into my CSS. All right. So that's going to be the target container, the one that we're going to be modifying. But then I'm going to go back into this. And then I think I'm going to be using this class from the the parent container holding that that is called Heather actions action. So this one in here, because it has the keyword of Heather can really help us understand that this class, or at least let us guess really that this class is only applied to Heather elements, or at least the button inside the Heather in 7.1. So I'm going to go ahead and use this class to be able to narrow things down for my browser so that it understands that I only want to modify the button inside my Heather. All right, so now that I have that in there, let's go ahead and go to the slightly tricky part. It's not too tricky, but it's not that straightforward. So what we're going to do here is basically duplicate the content that we have inside this button to create sort of like a pseudo button. All right, we're going to create a second button that looks pretty much the same way, at least text wise. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of extra modifications to the other containers inside um, our button in here so that we can have sort of like um like a collective background for those two buttons that we're going to be creating. All right, let's just go ahead and take it step by step so you can see what I'm what I mean here. So let's start by creating an after pseudo element. So this way we're going to be able to add additional text to our button because we can't really touch the HTML. So we need to do it via CSS. We could do it otherwise, but we're going to be doing it via CSS because it's the easiest one. So I'm going to go ahead and add here the content property. And in here, I'm going to type in exactly the same thing that I already have in my button. It's important that both things match because otherwise you're going to lose the effect completely. So let's go ahead and add that in browse. 
our store and then I want to add you can see how that is showing up on the screen I actually want to copy that little arrow because I want to add that in there as well so I'm gonna copy that if this lets me there we go and I'm gonna add it in there that's just a Unicode character so I'm gonna be able to just copy it and paste it in just like that all right so now we have pretty much two buttons in there all right it's it's the same container but we have the text of the button twice so that's good so the next thing that we need to do in here is set this as a position absolute element because we don't really want the space that this element occupies to actually affect anything else on the screen because of how we need things to move so let's go ahead and set this up as a position absolute element and then we're going to push this from the left side 100%. So basically what I'm doing in here, and I'm actually going to do something here really quickly so that you can see it more easily. I'm gonna set a quick uh, background color to this. Well, actually I didn't really have to set the background color, but here you can see that this is the original button where we're sticking that pseudo element to. Okay, so here we have the whole button. This is where it starts, this is where it ends. And then we have our pseudo element in here because we have set it to position absolute and we pushed it 100% from the left side of that button or of that element that is being used as a reference point. So now we have the text all the way out here. Now, the next thing that we need to do to make sure that that second button that we're creating is pretty much the same width as the one that we already have we're going to make sure that this has a width of a hundred percent like so so now if i were to add a quick background color to this let's just set that to blue or something you're going to see that the width of this is the same as the width of this one now of course don't pay attention to the padding or anything like that because we're going to take care of that in just a minute um, but you can see how both things are the same width in fact if i were to set this to the left zero you're going to see that when things are aligned they are exactly the same width in here it's just that this is getting a little bit caught off in here because of the border radius but you can see how both things match in width so that just means that once we add the um, scrolling effect everything is going to look really nicely because it's going to look like it's just one button that is the text is moving through it when it's actually two buttons that are moving at the same time. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is get rid of the color or the background color where it's originally sitting in, and we're going to add it to a different container. The reason why we want to do that is because we don't want to see a change or a shift in the background color. We just want to see the text move. So the text needs to be on a transparent background color, and then the background color needs to be set on a container that's holding both things that is completely fixed on the screen so that we can actually get the effect that we want. So let's go ahead and get rid of the background color for this one. This one, if I remove the background color, is just going to be completely transparent. And then I'm going to go into this one that I have set to red and I'm going to set it to transparent. So now what we're going to do is look for a container that is holding these two things. So right now you're going to see that here inside my inspector element tool, we have the A element where the text is located and also the pseudo element with our fake text or fake duplicate text. So what I can do here is basically target this container that is holding these two things of this one is holding this one but anyway we're going to be targeting this container in here and to this one that is going to stay fixed on the screen we're going to add that background color that the original button had so let's go ahead and target this um through either class let's go ahead and use heather actions action cta so we're going to use that one like so And then what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you a really cool trick in here. If what we want to do is use the same color that Squarespace applies through the variables or the settings um, through the color themes to that button when we choose it inside the little site styles panel, if we want to sort of link both things up, so the color that this is going to have with that variable so that if somebody changes in that in the site styles is going to change on the button as well. What we're going to do is reuse the variable that Squarespace is using to be able to set it up. So I'm going to go back into the original button. So the A element, the one that had the background color in the beginning. And then I'm going to go all the way down through here, through the CSS side. 
until I find the variable that is setting the color. So here you can see that the original background color has been crossed off. You can see it up here as well. Um, so it's being crossed off because of the background color of transparent that we just added to our CSS, our custom CSS window. But what I want to do is actually grab that original variable that was being used that is called um, primary button background color. And I'm going to use that in my custom CSS window to be able to set that same color. So now again, if I change that in the site styles for the primary button or like the header button, that is going to change the color here automatically. And if this is something that you're doing for your client, they're not gonna have to go into the code to change the color of the button, which is really cool. All right, so now that we have that there, let's go ahead and set up our border radius. Now, unfortunately for the border radius, there's not really a variable that we can reuse. We have to set that number manually. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what that value was so that we can reuse the same thing. So here we should have the border radius somewhere. Uh, background color, border color. Okay, border radius 100%. Perfect, so let's go ahead and set that up border radius 100%. You can see how now we have the oval that we had last time. It's just that this has been set up on a different container. And now the next thing that we're going to do is before we move on to the outline, we're going to go ahead and finally create the actual scrolling effect. So in order to make that happen, we first have to hide this extra stuff that we added in there. And the way that we're going to do it is by cutting it off with overflow hidden applied to that container that we're now using as our like the background of our button. So let's go ahead and set that up in here, overflow hidden, like so. And you're gonna see how now that text disappeared. It's still there, but it's not visible. So that's perfect, it's completely hidden because unless it starts showing up inside the background, we're not really gonna see it. So to be able to create the animation, we need to use keyframes. So let's go ahead and set that up. This is pretty much the way that you can set up the steps of an animation via CSS. So let's go ahead and give our animation a name. Let's say that this is gonna be, I don't know, uh, scrolling button, all right? That's gonna be the name of my animation. You can name it anything you want. Just make sure to change the corresponding name in the animation declaration that we're gonna be using later on so that you have both things connected. So here what I want is for my content, the text and the fake text, I want both things to be pulled towards the left side. So in order to pull it towards that side, I'm gonna go ahead and use here the transform property and set it to translate X because I want it to move on the horizontal axis. And I want it to be, again, going towards the left side. So I'm gonna be using here minus 100%. So this percentage is going to be based on the width of the element. So if I'm pulling this minus 100%, that means that if the element is here, if it's pulled 100%, towards the left side, which I don't know if you're seeing the other way around, but anyway, if I put it all the way to this side, then the right edge of the element is going to be where the left edge started, if that makes sense. It's just going to be shifting 100% of its own width. So that's basically going to give us that sort of scrolling motion in there, which is not really going to be a loop because we can't really do this in 3D, but it's going to look that way. So let's go ahead and set up our animation here for our element. So this is the one that we have set the background color uh, as transparent. So remember, this is the original button, the one that has the original text and that has the fake text attached to it. This is what we want to pull. So let's go ahead and set up our animation by calling it. So again, if you change the name of your animation in the keyframes, make sure to change it in here as well. So we have scrolling button and then we're going to set a timing for this. Um, I don't know, let's make it like one second. And then what I want this to do is to go infinitely, just scroll through that. <laughs> that is very fast, um, but you can see how it starts working. So everything gets pulled minus 100% towards the left side, which looks really cool. Now, if you don't wanna have that sort of start and stopping motion, what we can do is set this as a linear sort of transition, and that is just going to make everything move a lot more smoothly. And of course, if you wanna slow this down, because I feel like this is too fast, we can go ahead and increase the number in here. 
And now if we use something like four seconds, you can see how this customization looks really smoothly and looks really cool. So again, the important part in here is that you have the fake text matching the real text exactly. Otherwise, it's not going to look right. So here you're going to see that if I were to remove, for example, the arrow of our text, you're going to see that once everything gets pulled in there, you get that little sort of like jump in there because the width of both things don't match. So once the customization starts again or the, the scrolling effect starts again because the original element has to go back to its original place, then you're going to see that jump in between where the width of the fake text was and the original width starts up again or ends up really. So anyway, make sure to have the exact same content for both the original text and the fake text. If this is something that your client is going to be modifying, make sure to tell them that they need to change this in the code as well. All right. So now that we have all of this set, let's just go ahead and style this a little bit further by creating that little outline, which looks really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the container where I've set the background color now. So not the original button, but the one that I'm now using as the background color for the button. So this one here, Heather actions, action CTA. And then I'm simply going to add here an outline. So I'm using an outline instead of a border because I actually want to push the outline a little bit outwards and using outline is going to allow us to do that more easily than if we were to use a border. So let's go ahead and set this up. I think I'm going to be using one pixel solid and then I'm going to be using the same color in here. So if you or your client decides to change the color inside the color themes, that is also going to change the color of the border, which again, really cool because you don't really need to touch the code to make that modification. And now to be able to push it a little bit outwards, I'm going to be using the outline offset property. And then we're going to set this outwards, like maybe like two pixels something like that. That looks really cool. All right. Love it. Now let's go ahead and take care of the outline of these buttons as well. So here, and this is completely optional, but I just thought I'd show you in here anyway. So here, let's take a look at the eight element. Uh, we have a bunch of containers for the button. You're going to see how the structure of this is completely different to the one that we have inside the Heather button. We have a the button block that starts all the way up here. And then we have a like a very general container for Squarespace SQS block content. Then we have this one SQS block button container, SQS block button container center. And then here we have the actual eight element that has the link and that has the text in it. So here we can see that this one's called SQS block button element, large SQS button element, secondary SQS block button element. I think I'm going to be using this class of SQS button element secondary, just because I already know that I want to target all secondary buttons on my site. If you need to make things specific for your project, then make sure to include something else in here, depending on if you're going to be making the modification based on a different type of button size, or maybe a different alignment for the button, or maybe a specific button on the side, in which case you can use the block ID of your button block container. So you can go ahead and narrow things down depending on what you need. But in my case, I'm just going to keep things very, really simple like this. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy here the outline properties that I used before, and I'm going to add them in here for my secondary button. And you can see how that automatically adds the outline that I already used for the head button. So everything looks really cohesive and really cool. You're going to see here that everything looks really nice. We get that um, sort of scrolling effect there in the Heather. If I shrink things down, it's not really going to make any difference. We still have our button in place. We still have the effect going. We still have the outline happening in here. And the only thing that I didn't really tackle in this tutorial is the mobile view. I didn't apply the customization to this button because we just need to target it a little bit differently. So if that's something that you're interested in learning, let me know in a little comment below and I'll make sure to either update the tutorial inside the blog post or create a separate video for it. I really hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future content just like today. And if you ever need any support with Squarespace customizations, make sure to check out the links below to see how I can help you. I will see you next time.